Okay, this is a short tutorial to show some Year 10 students how to create a presentation board for their um, environmental design unit. So I've started out here and I'm in Photoshop and I've opened up an A3 uh, page and I'm going to place one of my drawings um, and the function I'm going to use is I'm going to place embedded. I'm going to actually embed another file into this file. Um, I find this way a little bit easier. So after you've scanned your documents, have them saved somewhere nice um, and easy so you remember where they are. I've got my files saved on my desktop. So the first thing I'm now going to do is go to File, not New or Open, but Place Embedded. It means that my file, which I've got here, will become part of this file and I place it. Now it has come in um, on its side and I do want to turn it around. So where I can go to do that is I'm going to go to Edit and Transform. Transform is a very um, handy place to know about because this is where you get scale and rotate, etc. Um, I'm going to rotate it clockwise once. Now while I'm here, I wouldn't mind um, enlarging or changing the scale a little bit. So holding down my Shift key, so I maintain proportions. I'm going to make it bigger. Now if I didn't hold down that Shift key, um, I may not maintain the same proportions and it might go a bit too thin or a bit too um, fat. I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit return. And now it's been accepted. Now moving over to here, can you see there's this funny little symbol just here? Well, what I'm going to do is I want to raster size this because at the moment I can sort of do A, B and C with this file, but I'd like to do everything and a lot more. So I'm going to go over here on top of the icon, or on top of the thumbnail, click my right button, Oops. try it on the, okay, just take that back. Don't click on top of the thumbnail, but click on the title bar, right click, and you can rasticize that layer. The other place I could have done it was also over here. You can see here I could have rasticized it. Doing that means now I can do so much more with it. Um, while I'm here, I might just change the name of this to house so it doesn't look as confusing. Um, all right. Now I created this um, in SketchUp and I've got this funny little SketchUp dude, he's got to go. So to delete him, um, Photoshop has one, two and three. Three tools that are very useful for selecting something and then you can either change the colour, delete, fill, etc. So what I just want to do right now is I'm just going to use this square tool and you know if I click on the bottom right hand corner I've got other options. But I'm happy with just the square one and I'm just going to just take this dude out like so and then hit delete and now he's gone. Now see how it's still selected? Um, I always remember learning about this and thinking how do I make that go away? You've got two ways you can do it. You've got to do the select menu and you can either deselect it or you'll start to learn keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut for a Mac is Command D. So I'm just going to get rid of that now. And so now you can see I can pick this up and move it around. Um, and that's looking pretty good. All right, next thing I think I want to do is I want to show you guys something about the background. You can unlock it, all right? Um, and what I'm going to do now is I want my paint can. So if I go up and down here, you'll notice my paint can's not there. That's because now there are so many of these different tools, um, they've started, Photoshop started to pack them sort of down. So there's something here, you can click on this and you can actually go in and edit. Oh, by the way, there's my paint bucket. But you can actually go in and edit the toolbar and there's just so many more options. Anyway, back to this one. I would really like the paint bucket. And I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to choose another colour. Um, for the sake of this, I think I'm going to go something not quite black, not quite blue. I'm going to paint this. All right, can everybody see that? And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use, this is where I was before. This time I'm going to choose this one here. You've got the quick selection tool, which is very interesting to use, making sure I've got this layer selected, because otherwise I'll end up doing work on this one. Making sure I've got this layer selected, I can actually use this and see how it grabs similar or like areas. And that's this tool here. And I'm going to hit delete. And then here as well, I'd like to get rid of all of this. And I'll hit delete. All right, and then if I zoomed in, I can actually see some more lines here, see, that I've missed. So I'll just zoom out again, and I'll clean that up here. 
as well while I'm at it. Okay. All right. Now I think I want to make sure that I've got my house selected and I think I'd like to make that a bit bigger. So I'm going to go back to edit and transform and scale. And off we go. We'll make this one here a little bit bigger. And at this stage, I want to put it down here in the corner and I'll hit return. Next thing I would think I'd like to do is actually bring in another little sketch. So I'll go file, place embedded, and I have another little one waiting for me right here. And I'll go OK. Notice that comes in on the next layer. And again, I want to rasticize it. So I'll use my rasticizing. Now it means I can just do so much more with it. This time, um, I want to keep the white in there. So I'm just going to use the magic wand tool instead. I hit delete. Delete. Ah, now if I do this, can you see it's going to lose that? So I don't think I want to do that. Delete, and instead I'm now going to choose, see this polygon lasso tool? I can start here, line it up, like so, and hit delete. All right, and now this is way too big, so I'll go to transform, scale. I'm going to bring this one down a little bit further. So this is not ideal because it's not, um, I am, I'm not using the same drawings that you've used for your project. But hopefully you can see here by clicking on different layers, um, if I wanted to move this around, well then I've got to make sure that it's on the right layer that I've got selected. What's really nice about this now to finish it off, so I've given myself some space here for a heading. Um, and so I'm going to click T for type click once on the screen and can you notice I've got a new layer and let's call this one here um, pop up shop now you can't see it because obviously the text is the same color so I'm just going to highlight it and let's go in here so I meant to say the text is the same color as the background now we can see it notice here I've got my fonts that have come up and I'm just going to choose something a bit simple I'm also going to choose something make it bigger. Notice it only goes up to 72. Well, I can actually type in what I would like. It's a bit too big, so we might go back. And that's looking a better. So now I pick it up and put it exactly in place. Now there's lots of other features and things that you can do here with this, including if I select that layer, just leave you with one more little thing here, blending options, and I can actually do bevel embossed. Might even do a drop shadow. Um, and an outer glow. All right, they haven't come up as well, but if we zoom in, you should be able to see those. All right. So I hope this helps you get started on your presentation board.